So what's the third big idea that you need to know if you're going to be an effective leader in our youth ministry? Well, this is the part where we talk about one of our most important values called partner with parents. Unless you're planning on spending 24-7 with your student, I think it would be a pretty good idea for you to partner with parents. Here's the truth. As youth leaders, you and I only get temporary influence in the lives of our students. But by default, parents get lifelong influence. And that is exactly why we think it's important to partner with parents as small group leaders. Like I said, this is our third big idea every one of our leaders needs to know. And so what we want to do is we want to talk about three ways you can focus on partnering with parents. Starting with the first thing, the first thing that you can do is this. When you partner with parents, that means you, number one, cue the parent. Now when we say cue the parent, let me explain to you exactly what we mean. When you cue the parent, you give the parent just the right information at just the right time so they can make a move to do what they would otherwise not be able to do. Here are three ways you can do this. Number one, let them know that you are planning to show up in their kid's life predictably and randomly. Just, just touch base with them. Let them know who you are. Let them know what your name is. Tell them a little bit about your story, what you're all about, and the fact that you have a desire to be a person who shows up consistently in the life of their student. Let them know that your goal is to help their child grow in authentic faith. Let them know that you want to be a positive role model for them, showing them what it looks like to follow Jesus and to be one of his disciples. Let them know that you want to help them win as a parent. Let them know you want to have a relationship with them, that you want to be partnering with them and helping in any way that you can. And finally, this is a really good one. Let them know what you're talking about in small group. I think that when we give our parents a heads up about the conversation topics we are discussing in small group, you empower the parent to have a better conversation with their student in the run of their week. Instead of them just asking, how was your day at school? Or how was Shiloh tonight? Now they already know what was being talked about so they can ask a more specific and pointed question that could have the potential to lead into a much more fulfilling and meaningful conversation. So the first thing you want to do in partnering with parents is to cue the parent. The second thing that we want you to do is we want you to honor the parent. Here's the fact. Kids struggle with authority figures. It's no different with their parents. But that means for us as leaders in their lives, it's our job to protect the relationship between parent and child. Now listen, you may get tempted to use the week-to-week -week battles your students are going through with their parents as a way to gain relational points. But here's what I want to tell you. Don't do it. Your job as a small group leader is to help your students honor their parents. After all, it's true that the Bible commands that, and part of our job is to help our students learn how to apply biblical truth, how, how to apply and live out scripture. Always assume that every story you hear from your student has another side and another perspective. In the book that you read, one of um, the writers talks about a story of a teacher friend of his who often would get complaints from parents about things that they heard happen in class. And one of the things this teacher started to do with his parents of the students that he taught is he would, he would make an agreement with them. He would say, hey, let's make a deal. If you don't believe everything you hear and, and assume that there's always another side to it when they tell you stories about me, when they tell me stories about you, I'll assume that there's another side to it, that there's another perspective to it as well. So the same goes for you. When you're a small group leader and you hear your, your, your students telling you all these stories about their parents and how awful they are, always assume that there's another side of the story, that there's another perspective that you're missing out on. 
The other thing that I always want you to remember is this. If you're not on the parent's side, ultimately you're not on the kid's side. And maybe instantly you think, well, Spencer, that can't apply in all situations. I mean, you were just talking about, you know, the three hurts in our last video. What if there's an abusive situation going on? Well, let me be clear. We are not talking specifically about abusive situations right now. What I'm talking about is I'm talking about the everyday struggles that normal parents have with normal teenagers. There's conflict, there's arguments, there's misunderstandings, and sometimes people, parents and students, they just rub each other the wrong way. So, so I'm talking about the everyday struggles, okay? If you're not on the parent's side, you're not on your student's side. So make sure that you're always making it a goal to build a bridge with the parents. Last but not least, the third thing you can do to help partner with parents is reinforce the family. Although parents spend approximately 3,000 hours a year of their time with their student, we have to realize, and this is important, that it's not always the same quality of time as the hours we are getting to spend with their student. What do I mean by that? Well, think about the run of a week for the average parent with a couple of kids. Parents' times with their kids are often filled with making dinner, packing lunches, helping with homework, driving their kids to and from practice, to and from school, going throughout all the different activities of the week. Meanwhile, over here as youth leaders, the hours we spend with their students are potentially filled with meaningful conversations, teachable moments, bonding experiences, we get to share laughs, we get to go out and eat food together, have ice cream, have lots of fun, go out on overnight experiences to camp and to conferences. We get a lot of quality time with their students. In the run of the year, because we get such little time with our students in the grand scheme of a week and a month and a year, oftentimes we can tend to make the most of it, which is good. Obviously, we want to be present for them. But I want to encourage you with something. When we talk about reinforcing the family, what we're saying is don't get greedy with the moments you want to have with your kids. There are always going to be some experiences and conversations that we want, and not just want, we need parents to be a part of. Like, for instance, this is what I mean when I talk about reinforce the family. Just use your mind a little bit. Use your brain. Christmas Eve, for example, not the best time to plan a sleepover party. Uh, right after Christmas in January, after parents just spent a bunch of money on gifts for the kids, that probably isn't the best time to host some kind of small group event where your kids are having to fork over a bunch of cash in order to participate. Um, you probably shouldn't be the first person to have the talk with your students. The fact is, sometimes without meaning to, it's easy for us as leaders to get greedy with the experiences we want to share with our students. But when you're intentionally reinforcing the family, you will always include parents in big decisions like a moment of salvation, a baptism. Even if the parent isn't a believer, they still are the parent. And including them in experiences has the potential to make a more meaningful impact in the lives of your students. So, our third big idea we want you to remember to be an effective leader in our youth ministry is to partner with parents. And the three ways that we do that is by number one, cueing the parent, number two, honoring the parent, and number three, reinforcing the family. Check out our next video where we're going to be talking about our fourth big idea you need to know as a small group leader in our youth ministry.